Hello, this is Tim Law with Plan It Forward Coaching. Uh, always a big thank you to over 500 people that have signed up for this uh, station on YouTube, Plan It Forward Coaching. If you haven't already, please do so. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, one of the biggest things that I try to emphasize here for teens and young adults is the idea of developing a good work ethic. Chase that work ethic with a solid uh, going the extra mile, good, some good people skills, uh, always go above and beyond, and you'll be amazed what you can accomplish in this country. I got a young man here who I've been very impressed with, and you talk about a work ethic. He's going to discuss uh, his uh, uh, after graduation here, how he's joining a harvesting crew out here in the Midwest. Uh, this young man is awesome. Uh, Owen Bayshire, congratulations on your upcoming graduation from high school, Owen. So go ahead, tell us a little bit about uh, your plans coming up here for the summer. All right, so I'm Owen Bayshore. Um, we're now in uh, June, end of June here after I graduate. Um, I'm going out west. I'm um, joining a new Miller Harvesting crew where for about six months, so about Thanksgiving or so, I'll be um, harvesting from uh, Kansas is where I'll meet them to North Dakota. We'll be harvesting wheat, corn, and whatever else I'll throw in there. Um, so uh, I leave the end of June. I'll meet them in Pride, Kansas, where I'll, I'll meet up with them. They'll pick me up from the airport, and then I'll, I'll be with them until till, till about Thanksgiving. Um, I just recently got my CDL through through uh, Mr. Forey at school and and uh, help from my dad and DCS driving school and all of that. So I'll be able to drive truck now. So while I'm out there, I'll be driving truck, running combine, grain cart, all of those things. Well, that's, that's very impressive for a guy that's uh, as young as you are, for sure. Uh, how did how did you hear about this, Owen? I mean, this is uh, when you and I were discussing this over at school, it was like I was just kind of blown away by, uh, you know, you uh, doing something like this, you know, how, how, you, how you came across it and everything. We're also going to jump back into your CDL thing with uh, Mr. Forey. So, so please tell us how you found out about this uh, harvesting so, group. So I'm in uh, 4-H. I'm showing goats um, and dairy beef steers. Um, and a couple of my friends in there, they, they've joined harvesting crews. Um, and I thought, man, this would be, this would be a fun experience. Um, I'll just, let me try it. They, they had fun. They had so much fun. They, they keep, they talk about it all the time. It's something that they said they'll talk about forever. This, this experience I'll never forget. So I was like, well, maybe, maybe that's something I would like to do. And I looked into it and I was like, that's definitely something I would like to do. So. Very cool. Very cool. And um, now obviously there, there's probably some fairly long days here. What, uh, what kind of uh, uh, time frame? Uh, you guys, you know, do you get started? What time? How long do you work during a particular day? So I'm definitely thinking we'll start. We might start later mornings, maybe once everything dries off after the dew point. But we're definitely going to work like late until everything starts to get that dew point back on it. Um, so definitely it just it really depends on each day. Um, there's no real set hours how long we'll work. Um, it's just whenever when it, whenever the conditions are good, they're gonna run as long as they can run until mm -hmm. until it's until it's wet or it's it's just not going good. So sure. So obviously, if there's rain or something like that, that would probably you know hold you guys off uh, for right. a couple it, hours, if not that day. Right. If it's if it's raining, they will either go visit things. I think while we're out there, that's something that they did when it's raining. It they'll just go maybe take a drive around, visit things or, or be in the shop doing maintenance or, or anything on, on a, really anything they tell us to do or, or they think there's an opportunity. We should go see this while we're here close and it's a rainy day. That's, I think that's what we'll do. So. Sure. Sure. And when you're, when you're actually, uh, you know, out doing this um, as far as you, you talked about your CDL. So now the CDL will not only allow you to drive a truck, but you can actually drive the combines and everything as well. Uh, I can drive a combine and everything without a CDL. It doesn't require a CDL, but driving truck is was the only thing that requires CDL. Um, so I have a CDL Class A that I've got now. Okay, because obviously it's because you're on those public roads and everything. I'm assuming right. that's probably the reason. Right. Yeah. So CDL, you need a to drive. You need that to drive a truck anyhow. Um, now there's like a farmer farm exemption thing, but it's it's a law. It's going to come eventually that everybody's going to need need a cdl to to drive a truck regardless if you're farming or not um now for a car you won't never need a cdl but for for a truck um 18 wheeler um or a box truck or anything like that um you're going to need a cdl yeah 
another another question about your CDL. My understanding is that the way the current law is, and I think they're talking about changing it. If you're 18 to 20, you can drive within the state of Pennsylvania. If you hit 21, you go nationwide. Uh, do, what's what's the rule out there in Kansas? Far as I know, is I can drive in each state. I just can't drive across the line. Um, so that means I can drive from farm to farm once I'm in the state. Um, I just can't take the, the truck across the state line. So it's a it's a it's a fishy rule, I believe. Um, it just depends on if they know a way around it to the, as I can drive in each state or if there's a different laws out there. I'm not sure, but I just know that I can drive it in the state from farm to farm. It just depends if I'm allowed to drive it across state lines, but I doubt I will be because that's a that's a nationwide law, I believe. Sure. But I can definitely drive it from farm to farm. And while I'm out there and while I'm going up through the states, I just can't drive the truck and trailer across state lines. Sure. And my understanding, too, is that uh, Mr. Forey's uh, CDL class here at Northeastern High School in Manchester, PA, is only one of two uh, driving schools that they can get uh, high school kids uh, their CDL. The other one, I believe, is out in California. Am, am I being fairly accurate on that? That's as far as I know. Those two are the only school talk courses um, through high school. Um, now, there's other schools that will get you rated 18, like DCS driving school. That's where I went. But, but no, but they're actual, actual driving schools. Um, but as far as I know, these are the only two school talk courses. Um, Mr. Forey is in the one in California. So yeah. that's why I was one of the first in the nation to to get my CDL through a school tour taught course. Sure, sure. And and how much would you encourage uh, other uh, teen young adults to get a CDL, Owen? I think that getting a CDL is something that it'll that'll never leave you out of a job. There's always a job and there's always a need. I seen the need and and I was like, yeah, I need to drive a truck, but also like if you don't have somebody to drive the truck to get your food to to the grocery store or wherever, um, it's not going to happen for you. So I think it's a skill that it's somebody is needed that many people don't have anymore. Um, that if you get your CD out, you're ten times better. Maybe maybe not ten times better than like somebody going to school for a doctor or something like that. But you have a job making hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. As soon as you drive a truck because they need them so bad, they'll pay you pay you big time just because they they need you to to be there driving that truck they need you on the road because they need people to get the food to the store and they don't have enough drivers so sure sure well the other thing and i've said this for, for to many uh high school students that uh you know I, I love the idea of the cdl i like the idea that you can come right out at like 18 and you're making uh you know that kind of money and you're not going into huge debt the, the challenge right. i see with a lot of the colleges is uh, a lot of these kids are going into college getting a huge debt coming out with kind of a questionable degree you know they're really not a lot of value for it and versus you know you guys that right right from the beginning you could you can be making you know some pretty good money so it's something that i think uh, every young person that has a desire that has a work ethic should absolutely look into it. And like you said, if you've got that CDL license, hey, you can go on to school, you can do other things you may want to do. But as long as you're renewing that or whatever, uh, you know, right. you're putting yourself in a very strong position in, in the job market. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, as long as you, even if you don't ever use a CDO, as long as you just renew that and say something happened, your your work goes out of business or or you just like, you can't take your other job. You always have that. Like that's always something that they'll hire you for because you have a class A CDL or you have a class B CDL. It's something that that's needed. That that looks that makes you look good. Like that is something that you put on your resume, and that looks like man, this this person has a skill. This person will be able to be adequate to this company and not just be able to drive in the in the lot. They'll be able to take shipments across country or across state or or something like that it's a it's a benefit to to a company having a cdl sure sure now uh, back to the harvest for just a little bit you start out in kansas and i i think is the way you explained it to me at school is you guys kind of move north as the seasons obviously you get up there to the northern uh midwest it's it's a different scenario than let's say uh, right. kansas so just yep. explain that a little bit so i'm gonna fly out to kansas um they start in tech the panhandle of texas 
Uh, as far as I know, is that's where they'll, that's where they go down to start. Um, by the time I get out there, they'll be in Pratt, Kansas, and that's because of the wind damage, tornado damage, all that stuff that's been going out happening in the midwest down in texas and oklahoma um so i'll be out in kansas um and then we'll just move up they like to move every 10 days as far as i know it's every 10 days they like to they like mm -hmm. to kind of move they like to get up through um and we will end in north dakota because that's where their home farm is mm -hmm. so and harvesting their own home farm i see um so we'll we'll go up through, through. I'll uh, we'll go up, uh, start in Kansas, and just go, work our way up north. I, we kind of do a little zigzag into Nebraska and and all of those things up as we go out through, um, and then finish in North Dakota. Sure. Any idea how many people are on this harvesting crew? I mean, this thing's got to be massive. Yeah, it's it's pretty big. So they're running ten combines, four grain carts, and sixteen semis. There wow. might be more semis. I'm not sure. Um, so there's the new Miller boys. So that's the family members. That's, they'll be always running combines. So they will be the bosses of the crew. And then I think they try to have as many people as they can to fill the rest of the, the equipment. So I'm going to say like 20, 30 people, maybe, maybe a little less. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. 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 Well, while I have you on here too, Owen, if, uh, if there's any of those guys that have a chance, even ahead of time before you get out there, if, if they have a chance, I'd love to do a you know, 10 or 15 minute interview with some of the higher ups there. And, you know, maybe we can attract some more people in their direction. So, right. uh, you know, please uh, reach out to them and, and give them my contact information because, okay. uh, you know, obviously uh, starting in Kansas, they, the center part of this country pretty much feeds not only the United States, but feeds the rest of the world. Very, very true, you know. Mm -hmm. So anything we can do from this end to try to, you know, help promote uh, the, the great work these people are doing, it would be our great uh, advice you may have for other teens and young adults. Owen. Um, anything that I have is just, is just work hard, have that drive and have that, have a goal, set it for yourself and achieve it. Once you achieve that goal, set another goal and achieve that one as well. Sure, sure. And uh, who would you say some has been some of your main role models for you as far as your solid work ethic? Uh, definitely my dad and um, some of my employees or my not you know, my employers um, they're ones that were that are kind of driving me but mainly my dad is probably the worth like work, my worth that thick um, role model sure sure fantastic well uh, any last second thoughts Owen this has been great we can conclude it here if, if you're good to go can you hang for a minute when we yeah. finish yeah that's that's I'm all good now Okay, great, great. Awesome, awesome job. And uh, congrats on, on uh, you know, setting yourself up in a, in a great way for your life and your future. Really, really proud of you. Thank you.